here. Okay, um, let me explain a little bit about uh, motors for woodworking machinery, because most of our woodwork machinery have motors, and it seems that very few woodworkers know much about motors. Um, there are single phase motors, these are the motors you can plug into your house, regular house plug, and there are industrial motors that run on three phase power. Three phase power you cannot run on your household, you need industrial power. Um, uh, but lately, and there are ways to generate three phase power out of your household power, um, with uh, rotary phase converters and over the years uh, these little devices have become available and they are a variable frequency drive. And what these do is you put, this one in particular uses 110 volt electricity and turns it into 220 volt electricity. But it also turns it into three phase power. Three phase motors do not have start capacitors. They don't need any start circuits. They uh, are what motors are supposed to be made like. Single phase motors have all those things because they don't run without them. Uh, Tesla and all those people said this is how a motor works. And those are the proper motors. They're inexpensive and they are not limited by horsepower. The largest single phase horsepower that you could plug in is about 10 horsepower. Beyond that, they can't get started. Okay? Horsepower rating for three phase motors are in the thousands. There, are, there is no limit, I think. There were factories building motors that men could drive cars through. Uh, so, um, What's, what, why I'm telling you this is because you don't know what a motor is. Not really, for most people, it's just spinning something. Uh, and a lot of the industrial machines you see around here are three-phase machines from an industrial environment that does not have household power. It has three-phase power. Household current, if you didn't know, has 110, and that's your lamp cord, and 220, that's your stove and dryer. Most of the heavy Woodwork equipment you buy if you're buying for your house is 220 if it gets up into the heavier ranges. 110 will, will run this sort of thing. Um, so, so why am I telling you all that? Okay, a single phase, this is a one horsepower, three phase motor, it's in a lathe that a buddy bought for $200 and the lathe's worth about $3,000. He could chuck that motor out, go buy a single phase motor, put that motor in hoping that this pulley shaft fit. If not, he'd have to buy a pulley. You have to make sure he gets the right motor mount because there are at least 400 different motor mounts all and he, you need to know how to read the tag and find out which one it is. There are totally enclosed fan cool motors, there's explosive proof motors. The amount of information you'd have to know, or get lucky, everybody goes, ah, it's not, it's not worth it. That's why I got it for $200. This is $120. He does not take that motor out. This, this drive, which will ship to your door for $120, after you sit in your chair on the internet and go, bye. <laughs> okay will come to your door and you plug it into 110 and now it'll run this motor. Now how it works is um, <coughs> it turns this electricity into DC power like a light, uh, like a battery and then converts it back into AC power which is our household power and makes it into three waves. Single phase power is a wave and it cycles 60 times a second. Three phase power is just three waves overlapping each other. And think of them as bicycle pedals. Single phase power is a bicycle with one pedal. Three phase power is a bicycle with three pedals and three legs. That's why it doesn't need anything to start. It's got three legs all the time generating power and they're much more efficient and, and there is nothing to go wrong in there. 
There is nothing inside that motor, so there's no switches. There are windings and there are bearings. That's it. You pop this apart, you change bearings, it's easy. You change and fix a three, a single phase power if it burns out. It's a boing, and some are even more boing. I hate them, so I buy these. But I, uh, uh, the important thing is, is this not only converts uh, 110 power uh, to 220 volt single phase, in this case, up to a one horsepower machine. So if you saw a used drill press that was three phase, it's important that it's 220 volt electricity. Three phase also has a number of voltages. And uh, just for, for, for practical purposes, you should stay in 220 volt range. That's the one that's the easiest to convert. I have machines in here that are converted. Uh, we have every voltage, okay? But this one is about just, I see a drill press, it's a beautiful drill press. It's, the guy wants 90 bucks, it's three phase. What am I going to do? Okay? Well, you buy one of these. That's $120. You put it on. That drill press has one of these. This not only, um, see, and this is how easy it is. See that cable right there? The two little screws, you, you, you put the, the common and the black into those two screws, and it says L1, L2. You got a ground screw, and you hook it on there and you stick the three motor lines to the motor. Doesn't matter which one. Just hook it on, okay? Now what's funny about a three-phase motor is, all three-phase motors, are you can reverse the rotation. And you reverse the rotation if you change any of those two wires. If I switch any of those two wires, that changes the rotation of any three-phase motor. So a three-phase motor, uh, you can get multiple, multiple directions. So for a lathe, this is good. If you have a lathe that doesn't have reverse, if you put a three-phase motor in with one of these, you have, you, these can have little external switches. This doesn't have to be anywhere near. Uh, and you can have forward and reverse. But this is still not what's fantastic about this. This also provides braking, soft start acceleration, speed control, and a number of things. And it is your magnetic motor protection switches. It thermally protects your motors. It is also your motor control. So for 120 bucks, you get a motor control, which means you can use your old switches and make it look retro. And it just is controlling this through low voltage. So there's a whole bunch <coughs> of little leads here. Telephone wire is all you need. I could lick them and contact them on my tongue. And work on them live. It's a really low voltage safe system. Uh, so this one will, um, okay, so you see it's flashing 60. That's the hertz. So normal electricity operates at 60 hertz. A motor speed is based on the number of poles. And what poles are, are just coils of wire that make a magnet. And the number of those magnets in a motor change the speed. A 1750 RPM motor is four poles, uh, uh, and a, a 36 would be two poles, and so on. And that's how motor speed is controlled if it's at a constant hertz rating. So those a four-speed motor at 60 hertz is 1700. At 30 hertz, it would be half that speed. And the motor will operate fine. If you adjust the hertz, you adjust the speed. Um, now, we've programmed this. It's very easy. You push little functions. I'm not going to go into the, the stuff like that. I'm just going to show you how easy it is. And it, this is so easy to do, a monkey could do it. So it's power in there to your motor. There's nothing else. It's all you need to do. And you push start. I'm now running a 240 volt motor. And notice how smooth that motor is, sir. Okay? And I'm running that at its rated RPM. Okay? I haven't got it grounded, so don't touch it. Um, it's just, it's tingling. Okay? Now, these little arrows here, you can add little things and dials. Um, contrary to what a lot of people believe, a one way lathe is not a second phase lathe. A one way lathe 
is a three-phase lathe with one of these buried, and they pulled all the stickers, and they don't let you go in and touch anything. They put you some knobs out on the outside. That is what a one-lane base. It's a three-phase motor with variable frequency drive. So you want a one-lane lathe? Buy a three-phase motor, and three-phase motors repeatedly in this condition sell for twenty dollars. So you don't rebuild these motors. And then, and if you start looking. And, and the reason they're $20 is because the guy that bought the three-phase motor in the drill press pulled it out and went and bought a single-phase motor because he thought that was the easiest way to convert his drill press. But he doesn't have any of this cool stuff. So you, here uh, I'm running on keypad so I can push the up and down buttons and you, you can see the motor's actually changing speed. So now I don't even have to go in and do belts when I'm on a lathe a drill press, whatever I want. Okay, that's eight hertz. Okay, uh, so we'll come back up. Um, this will also go beyond 60 hertz. It's programmed now to stop at 60 hertz. So that's pretty cool, eh? Is that cool or what? What happens when we get down to DC? You can actually pull DC and run DC motors with these. It does actually have DC taps. Uh, this one I don't think does, but I do have ones that do. But the three-phase AC is the way to go. In fact, kits for building CNC machines are, are selling you this with a high-speed spindle that's running at 400 hertz for 250 bucks. So they just give you a spindle of motors about that big and spins at 24,000 RPM. Okay, and this is what they're using. Um, you can program a braking on this so it can add safety. Uh, for instance, my radial arm saw there has this model in a three horse built in below if you look. It's built in below. And that will, uh, that converted that saw into single phase. But it's still, it, nothing had to be changed on the saw whatsoever. And it stops the blade in five seconds. So it's safe. Um, I want to put one on the PK, but that's a 600 volt machine and it's much more difficult to run these on 6 volts. That's why I recommend when you're looking at three phase, don't assume that they're 200 volts. And there's a number of 200 volt ranges that are possible to run on these 208, 220, and 240 are common 200 volt ranges that this can be run on. Um, here I think I have this set to stop that motor. Um, sorry in two seconds. It's ramping the motor up in, and you can program that. So you can go in, I want it to ramp up to speed, so you never get that which a lot of modern machines will have like that, that really smooth. That's how they're getting it, okay? So it's really cheap. And I'm wondering why a lot of new machines don't have this. Because if I'm paying $120 retail shipped to my door, what is it going to cost the manufacturer to put that in? That's a cheaper motor to build. I think we should complain. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that is one of the easiest things to do. If you do see uh, one of these things, get it. Uh, let me show you it on, uh, on a practical machine. So this would be a typical machine would be ideal for that. It's a one horsepower machine. And I do want it to be 110 because it's a drill press. I've milled this drill press all over the place so it's easy to plug it into a 110 outlet. I don't want to change belts. And change belts. Okay, so I can also add as many switches as I want. So now I've done the control sides of that. I showed you how to hook the power up and make it run. Now we're not going to use the keypad to control it. We're going to use external switches I've added. Now I've got industrial ones here, but like I said, you can take wires and touch them to your tongue and it would work. You can use any type of switch, doorbell, it doesn't matter. It's a very low voltage amperage reading. I'm running it through braided dishwasher line because I think it looks cool. And uh, 
I just, I just put, uh, okay, so what I've done here is that's the original switch that was rated to run the full voltage motor, and, I, it's, and I'm just using that to run the drill press, okay? Now you see I have the Hertz rating there at 2.2, that's why that's turning so slow. Why would I want something to turn that slow? Well, see, I can hold that motor. See that? It's a horsepower motor. I'm holding it. It's not stopping or doing anything. Well, I want a little more power to tap, maybe, in metal. And I don't want to snap my tap off. I'll just turn it up until I reach the torque and the speed I want. And I go, yeah, yeah, I can stop that. So now I put tap in there. I can tap metal. And well, when I'm done tapping, I'll just tap back out. Because that thing will reverse it with the switch on the fly for free. Comes in the side of the little thing. And it's as simple as pushing program in the book. What program that is? I say I want external control. That's a busy beast. That's a Princess Auto switch, $1.99. Okay? You might not need that, but who cares? That's a potentiometer. You can buy them at Radio Shack for $10. They're 10 ohms, but here's my speed control. So I'm now running at 120 hertz. I'm running the motor at the back instead of 1725, actually running the motor at 3600, which would be a normal motor, two poles. So there's no problem for the motor. Bearings for motors are made to run at the higher speed. Some motors you can run faster than that, but I don't have to change the belt. That's not top speed. That's only middle speed. If I put this in its highest speed on the belt and crank it up all the way, this is fast enough to become a pin router. And I can put router bits in here and actually mill slots with that drill press. Okay? And I do it all the time. Uh, well, we've added not as much anymore because we've got the other ones, but that's another feature. And look, it comes to a break, I don't wait. Don't need it, but I don't want to wait. <laughs> but that's a, that's a three-phase motor. That's a three-phase motor, but I'm gonna, but, but it's plugging into a 110 outlet. So if I sell that, I'm not going to tell you that's a three-phase motor. What I'm going to tell you is that is a 110-volt machine that has variable speed control, it has speed control, it has uh, soft start, it has uh, dynamic braking, it has reverse on the fly, and if you wanted to add more features, and there's hundreds of them, you can have what's called a jog switch. Sometimes you need a bit to be in a specific position, you can just have a bit, as long as you hold it, it'll turn. So you can just go, mm, mm, mm. maybe you're tapping, it's like, oh, 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 I'm done. You could have that. You could also have multi-function switches. I don't want to turn to that position. There's always a procedure I do, and I think in this model, Matt's model is up to 14 programmable speeds. If I'm doing a process, say I spin, uh, I'm on a lathe and I'm making a, a pen, I'll spin it at 900, I'll polish at 1800, and I'll do certain other projects at 1200. I do this all the time, <coughs> and I don't want to go click, click, click. I program it, and I just go speed one, okay, speed two, and it just does those all for me. Or I can do this. So it, it, it does much more than a single phase will ever do, and you will never have parts to replace for that. <coughs> These currently run for 10,000 hours uh, in industry. 10,000 hours. The little tiny box of Chinese goodness. <laughs> now that's a cheap one, and that's a, I, I, I call, you should, if you have a lathe that's one horse, if you have larger horsepower, you will have to work with a 220 volt single phase input. That one does allow you to have a 110 input, and that's fantastic on these small machines. So there's a lot of machines like my little no, like my little sander here is a horsepower. Um, you know, any a lot of machines are a horsepower, uh, but uh, these will run up to. We have one over here that's 10 horsepower, which is a pretty massive machine. Uh, if you're running 10 horsepower at home, you're the envy of the neighborhood. 
comparing apples to apples, if you're running a, a single phase versus a third phase, electricity hydro bucks, is is there a big difference when you're actually these when are you're stepping it down or, or stepping it up? Or these actually burn less electricity. I'll tell you why because the soft start reduces. We're talking minuscule, okay? Yeah, when it starts. Yeah, this. If there's this off this, yeah. the in surge. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, some industrial applications, which is really what these come to, uh, be, they were never invented for phase conversion. It just so happens they do. <laughs> okay, they were they were meant for motor control. So these types of devices would have been in the Glad factory, and they all can talk to each other by computer. And they can say, hey, the plastic bags are coming down too fast because my little zipper lock thing's not working, and it controls it. So they get very sophisticated. This is just really all you need to know. It's what you need to know. It, it, it's a rabbit hole you could go down. Oh, yeah, I can. There's experts I've talked to, and they're, and they're like, I can't do that. So we had Jen, and they go, how did you learn that? I said, somebody on the internet told me. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah. And, it's I, and I've been doing it for yeah, I've been doing it for six years. So uh, six years ago, the, the the knowledge of variable frequency drives was they're <laughs> worth it if it's a three horsepower or less. The cost of them was, but now Matt's buying ten horsepower units for four hundred dollars. That's the largest you can buy for uh, for that phase two twenty. 10 horsepower. Because it'll take single phase. As soon as you go over 10 horsepower, now you actually need industrial three phase. Or you have to de rate. Them. Get, get, get. No, it well, there are, there are 100 horse variable frequency drives that do require three phases, but you can feed them with single phase as long as you de rate them. As long as you don't. 66%. It's, it's that single pedal and the three pedals. You're feeding it with a single pedal and it's putting out three pedals. That's actually okay. Somewhere. So that's really designed to take three pedals in. So you can't throw all the power into one pedal. <laughs> you can only throw the power in. So generally, uh, on that stuff, you'd buy. But but that's even disappearing. The industry is realizing that that is the way to run motors. You're going to see those on your furnaces. They're going to start to control the fan rotation. It's, it's there now, I think. Yeah, most likely. Because those run DC, quieter, uh, cool pumps, all kinds of those things where they can remotely control those. So I can control that motor from my iPod. I could put a keypad start stop on my iPod. If you have three phase power already, it has to unlock some of the benefits. Yeah, they're, they're both multifunction. You can either three phase. That one in particular is only single phase input, which means you'd only take one of your phases. But uh, most of them are either or. Because people just strictly want them for the brake, which is what they're geared for. They want them for the braking, or they want them for speed control, they want them for all the other functions. So, so I have a question then. Uh, I have a 14 inch belt. Yeah, yeah. It's an old machine. Yeah. And it, it runs for five minutes whistling, you know. Yeah. Can I put a brake with one of these things? Well, that's all of these right here. But it's a, in mine is a one phase, eh? It's a one phase to four. Uh, no, not with that. But we were talking last time and someone was here said that you can get a DC injection for. I don't think they're cheaper. I think the brake, they're a brake that, 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 that DC injects. In. Which is only one little aspect of that thing. I personally no, seek out like three phase because of what I've learned about all of the things. Yeah, but I'm stuck with the machine. You know, well, you could look, look at four. Yeah, I'm ordering the second one. You know, you see, like they sell, like they're selling them for 50 bucks. You probably have to pay 200 bucks for a break. Yeah, I know. Go anywhere. So you buy, just chuck the, 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 the parts or pull some parts. Oh, yeah, all the parts. I mean, that would be my advice. And then get one of these. You'd love one of these. I cut that. So that can turn the speed around. It's aluminum. It's, it's awesome. Um, if you want to see Matt, he can show you a big, huge one. And that shiny, shiny, shiny box there is the motor driving that blade in the Watkins DK. Yeah, it's not toaster. And, and Matt, 
Can you tell them the story about what voltage you got and the trouble you went to? Oh, uh, when I here put this on. I can. When when I purchased this song on your chair. It, Even though you're an elder, yeah, yeah, yeah. when I purchased this saw, it came with an outside motor tag on me, and a lot of machines come with an outside motor tag. It says what the voltage is in the software. And it said it was it was built in England, but it said it was 208. CSA approved. So 208 was generally uh, small industry, not monster industries. They had four boards. School board, a lot school of school boards, boards for 208. 208, three phase. And then industry started going up to 600 volts. There was a, a transition point. But Americans, their industry was already at 440 volts. We were 208, sometimes 440, but not a big here. A lot of our motors were at 440 ever. So they were building this motor for both Canada and the States. So they built this for 220, and they built it for 440. So it has a conversion in it. There's six wires. So you wire the wires just a little differently, and it's now a 440 volt machine. They can ship it to the States. You want to ship it to Canada? Uh, if there's any of uh, the switch the wires. It's 220 machine. It's completely double. So the length of the wires become twice as long, or half as long, but twice as thick. Because they put two wires together. So when I bought the machine, there was a sticker on it. It said the motor was reworked by a motor factory. The motor company. You didn't say do not open? No, it just said. <laughs> It was reworked. So what they did was they took it and they changed it from 208 to 440. Then they tested to see if it would run on 550. And they were pushing 550 into that. So what that does is it runs a little hot. A little hot in this area. And then I I had problems. I took the start three different motors. I finally went in the last motor company and they had a potentiometer. They just had these great big jumper cables, hooked it on, and they went like this. And then it hit 468 volts. And it went, ding! The guy looked at me and said, it's 468 volts. I said, I bought the machine because I thought it was too tiny. I'm stuck in the predicament that I chased the machine down Looked at the outside tag, but when I got to the inside, I'm like, I don't know. It was 220 or 440, and I'm 550. It's like three different voltages. That's not possible. Can't be possible. When it's a higher voltage, 600. 600 is a range from 550 to 600. That's all 600 range. 440 is anywhere between 420 and 460. This professional motor company told me this is 468 volts. So okay. So they somebody bought it, the machine. They had a 550 volt industrial company, and they were making this motor work hot. What I mean hot is they're shoving too much electricity, too much voltage into it. And it's, at, if it gets too hot, it burns the sheath off the copper windings, arcs it saw, and then you fry the windings inside. It wasn't, that had, hadn't happened yet. So when they took it apart, I said, I want you to bring out all six windings again, all six leads. So I now have the availability to sell it to somebody in the States, which sometimes they go crazy for these kind of soda, soda canes, for PKs, PK table sauce. This gentleman here is the craziest one out of us all. He's got four of them. <laughs> so, but we do buy these things. We, it's a desire, it's a hobby. But this, this one almost kind of was one of the ones that shot me in the foot. I was, a little bothered by it. But they brought in all the leads. And once they once I was convinced that it was it wasn't 468 anymore, it's now half of that. Basically this motor is rated at 234. That's its perfect 
winding, because the, the longer the winding, the voltage changes. So if they put one more loop on it, it might add four more volts. One more loop, four more volts. So it's labeled 220, but it's really a 234 perfect voltage. Now, I said, okay, we solved the motor. Went out and bought this VFD. This VFD is rated for 10 horsepower. And the reason why I went with the 10 horsepower VFD, the more horsepower it has, the faster it starts, and the faster it stops. And you don't have, and the next one under this was only rated for four and a half horsepower. So it went from four and a half horsepower, the next one up is 10. This is a five horsepower motor. I said, I can soft start it, so get the blade up and going in 10 seconds. Then you're have, not having that power surge. You're not blowing your breaker, and you don't over voltage the VFD. If you soft start it, it doesn't have that surge. And this is a computer, this is a very smart computer. If you try to start that motor in one second, that's drawn 15 horsepower. It blows this, it blows the circuit, not a circuit, it doesn't blow, it trips a code. It says reset. You're starting it too hard, so then you change it. Now there's no blade on here, so I can probably start this in half a second. Get this up to speed in half a second. As soon as I put a big, big blade on it, half a second, I'll pop the little thing in there and say, you have to reset it. So right now, this is set for eight seconds, just like Europeans have a rule. Any saw equipment has to stop in 10 seconds for safety. If a, saw, if a manufacturer can't stop it in 10 seconds, it's illegal in Europe. That's the rules. So this, and that's at an industrial level. So this one here, I only have, I do have the lead Zeppel, like Jack does. This, so I just hit the start button on the saw, stop button. And I'm just using two buttons here, so. Eight seconds. Jack and I have come to the conclusion maybe this front bearing, because it gets hot up here, and the back bearing stays pretty cold. So that extra winding noise, Jack seems to think that bearing is on his last leg. Well, it depends. You can buy one for light, light household use. A hundred bucks for that front bearing. The back one, about forty. But you can buy the Brad and Case one, the one that they manufactured this motor with. It's around three hundred dollars for that one bearing. And that back bearing is still about forty fifty dollars. Is the chrome casing is that a heat sink or what is it? Right? The chrome casing around it is a heat sink or is it Oh, it's, what it is? Or is it just the diabetic of the motor? What do you mean is that it's a chrome casing around it? That's chrome what? casing? Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, just, it's cast aluminum. Oh, I it's want cast to look, aluminum. I want oh. to look fancy. Oh, oh I see. Okay, I thought it was... Yeah, I, it was I, I sat there pulse just for 20 hours oh, okay. after my kids went to bed. It looks very nice. And I'm not allowed to watch TV <laughs> or do anything loud from 7 o'clock at night. Okay, and I'm not tired until 11, so okay. I just sat there and took this no, up I thought to, it was a heat tank or something. No, no. I just took this up to 800 grit sandpaper. <laughs> so, it's... You know, I, some people like owning Corvettes. I, some people like Corvettes. I just like the shiny machines. This is my hobby. I feel better about it. I feel better about it. So, but as I said, I could change this. Right now, I'm totally comfortable having that start in two seconds and stopping in two seconds. But once it has an 18 inch blade on it, two seconds to start. And this is the catch with these, with these little things. The start, it will uh, throw out a fuse in this and it doesn't wreck anything. You might have to do that 50, 60 times before you wreck it. But once you set it, it runs good. It will just keep running. It'll stop. It'll start. Sorry. It'll start always at 18 inch blade. So you set it for the heaviest load. And you say, it started popping the little fuse in there. With six seconds to start that big blade up in six seconds. That's where 
at four seconds or three seconds, it always pops. It stopped popping at six seconds. Well, then let's move it up to seven seconds. So my thickest blade, my biggest blade. So if I ever go to a 16 inch blade, seven seconds will do it every time. So now for the stopping capacitors in it, it's a coil. So what happens is, is when you turn this thing off, this thing becomes a generator. The speed is a generator. It's actually pushing hydro back out of the sink. And inside this machine, there's something called a heat sink. And the heat sink is like a light bulb. You can actually put a light bulb on this thing. And it starts burning up the electricity that's being pumped out of this instead of shoving it into your panel. And you can add more heat sinks. So one light bulb's going to use 100 watts. 200 watt light bulbs, two 100 watt light bulbs will burn up that electricity and create more force on this thing to slow down. And that's pretty much how they work. So, now if you have any questions, you should probably pull Jack aside. He's the one that taught me all this. <laughs> You can add more breaking resistors. Now, yeah. breaking resistors.